Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're painting the pedestal of time from The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Admittedly, I haven't played a lot of Link to the Past. I did a short video with my husband Steven on his channel um, when we did the Super Nintendo Classic review. We played through all of the games on the Classic, um, and that's really all I know about Link to the Past. So um, when Steven suggested this as a painting, I looked it up and I thought that would be cool to kind of continue my series of Zelda things in forests surrounded by light, like I did for Skull Kid and Ocarina of Time, and then the opening of Majora's Mask. Um, I thought it would be cool to kind of continue that. Now I know in the game it's a little bit more blue and misty than this, and I will be bringing in more blues than I've drawn here. Um, but I thought it would be cool as I'm working through this painting when things are drying um, to play through the game, to get out the Super Nintendo Classic and to continue where I left off last playing. Um, just to see the story, because I know it's um, a lot of people's favorite Zelda games, so I thought it would be cool to also play through it. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do for my painting is I'm going to paint in this background. Everything behind these trees is going to be um, blurred, kind of misty, where you can't quite see what they are. And I'm starting with a very light yellow. From about um, halfway up, I'm going to paint in a light yellow, using a little bit more white in some areas, maybe a little bit of orange even, just to bring in a base color. With the first color down, and that's this one over here, I could start to bring in some other colors to kind of make it just varied and not one solid color. So I took some nickel gold and then put that in right here. Um, I just mixed it in with that base. And then I can start to add it in while it's still wet and kind of just blend it in so it looks a little bit different than somewhere else. My next layer is some of these really far away trees and bushes. Um, and I wanted something that was like slightly green, but not too green compared to this kind of rusty color I had here. So I went through a few different ones by taking this color I had and adding some um, primary cyan until I got something I was happy with. So I'm just going to take this big brush and um, just tap it a little bit into this paint and then just kind of tap in some of these far away bushes. I don't really want to have any hard lines, um, but I don't want it to be so light you can't see it either. I'm continuing some of these layers back here by getting bluer and darker. So my next one is basically just this color with a little bit more cyan and a little bit of Mars black. And I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing with the same brush, tap it in, do a little bit of swirling just to make it look like it's misty and far away. When I'm mixing up my colors, um, I test them against the last color or whatever it's going with just to make sure it's like the right darkness or lightness or hue or exactly what I'm trying to do. In this case, I had mixed this first and it was dark enough like I wanted, but it wasn't as dark as I wanted. So I mixed it again, added some more black and I came up with this, which I tested on here and I like a lot better. And this will cover any of this and you won't be able to tell when it's all done. So sometimes I can test on the canvas, but I also do sometimes just test on the palette or on paper just to see how it looks. Um, so I'm just making these darker and then once I'm happy with uh, how dark it's gotten with all of my layers, I'm going to bring some of that in to kind of block in this ground area. I got this far and I really like how I did this last layer, but it makes me not like the other layers as much. They look too much like pine trees and I want it to look more like deciduous or leaf trees. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to go back in with each of these colors um, because I still have them on my palette here and I can just start to change these shapes so they're not like these cone pine tree shapes. I 
darkened um, some more of this background, just some pure Mars black, and now I'm taking one of these lighter greens I had and just tapping in some leaves just to give this some hint of shape. And then once I've done that, I'm also going to go over it with a lighter one just to give them some nice bright highlights and spots. And then I can start on the bottom. And for the bottom, I'm just going to kind of take some of these same colors and just make it so there's more of like a spotlight effect here in the middle. So it's going to be dark and then fade towards my lighter colors in the middle. I want the pedestal to be symmetrical on both sides. I want it to be very nice and perfect just to make it look very important here on the lower bottom of the canvas. So what I'm doing is I'm doing it in one point perspective. Now a box isn't too complicated in one point, but when you turn it into an octagon, you have to cut off basically each corner. So it becomes a little bit more complicated. So I'm starting with my vanishing point and because I do want it to be like centered down here in the canvas, um, I've measured in 12 inches on the left and the right because it's 24 inch canvas. So this is perfectly in the middle left and right. Now I didn't draw it perfectly up and down because I want my vanishing point to just drop a little bit. The center point of the canvas is about here. So I've dropped it down to eight and a quarter inches up. And then I've drawn in this first vertical mark to help me mark some things in later so I can judge what the center point is here. Um, it's going to help me out in the end. So I'm starting with that. Next, I need to start to block in the outsides of my box and then the very bottom point and the very top point. I'm drawing my box with this vanishing point. So I've lined up where I want it to go and I'm drawing it into this vanishing point um, all the way off the side of the canvas here. Now I'm going to measure up how tall it is on this side, which is um, looks like three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to go over here and do the same thing, three quarters of an inch, line it up with the vanishing points and draw the same line in so it's symmetrical on both sides. I'm also going to decide where um, a center line is on this left part and this right part. So I've decided to go um, six inches to mark this into fourths. And I'm just going to go from this mark all the way up to the vanishing point, all the way down to the other half mark here. For my top and bottom lines, I'm deciding how much space I want before it starts, and then how tall it should be going back in space here. So I'm going to line up my ruler here in the center point, and um, decide I want maybe about this much space um, on the bottom. And there's also going to be stairs here, so I have to take that into account and then about how far I want it to go back in space. And I'm picking some even whole numbers like three and six. And then I'm gonna come over here to this side of the canvas and mark in three and six. And then over here and three and six. And I'm doing more than one line because if I just worked with the center one, I might accidentally draw it skewed like this and that would look really bad in the end. So if I do this, I can line this dot with this and make sure it's perfectly straight and draw it all the way out to my far line and then all the way over here. And then I can just move over to here and line this dot up with my line and continue drawing this nice and horizontal. I'm getting the basis for this box and now I need to kind of chop off all these corners. And the first corner is gonna get chopped off from here and go all the way over to this line. But I don't know exactly where that line is. I could draw it here, I could move it down to here. So this angle is very important to get right. And I'm going to figure that out by drawing an X through the middle of this. From the far corner all the way down here on the right to this top one on the top left. Um, and notice I'm using those outside lines, not these middle ones yet. And then I'm going to do the same going this way. And if I did it right, it should cross right here in the center. And I can figure out how tall that is. So it looks like it's five and an eighth. And I'm going to come over here and find out where five and an eighth lines up here. 
And then I'm just gonna draw a horizontal line to connect that too, because I will need this line later and I might as well do that right now. Now I have a plus in the center of this box and an X. Um, so all of these lines are gonna help me figure out exactly the angle to cut off each of these corners. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the intersection of this line right here with the X and then line it up with the opposite side and just draw myself a horizontal line to connect those. And the same down here where the X is lining up with this line um, and just draw that horizontally across. And now I have all of the guiding lines done so I can cut off these corners. I'm gonna connect this dot to this dot here and then this dot over to this dot and that'll make myself a perfect octagon in one point perspective. I've drawn this and um, I want it to be here because there are some steps because it does sit elevated, but that means I need to kind of bring the ground a little bit further out and then behind where this is because I have these trees coming too far down. So I'm gonna block it in with white first just to make sure I cement it down where it's going to be. And then I can erase all these extra lines. I need to keep my vanishing point and I can work on filling in the ground like I want it to go. I drew in a line to represent the ground versus these trees and bushes that are sitting back here. Now I'm not just going to take a black pen or um, some dark paint and just draw that line in and then darken all of this. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to get some darker color like the brownish I had here and bring it up and just kind of fill in some of these areas so I don't have any green down here in these areas. I also drew an ellipse to represent where I want the light to kind of come in like a spotlight but I don't want it to be a perfect elliptical spotlight because that would be really strange in the forest. So I had to draw in my trees and then I kind of drew in where I want their shadows to be. And those are kind of scribbled in to represent the dappled light that comes through from the tree leaves that are gonna be up in the canopy. So I have kind of a guideline of where I need the uh, grass area to be light, where I need it to be dark and just where it goes in general. I blocked in the trees with carbon black just to put them here because I can always add burn umber and sienna and like a lighter tan to them for the bark texture later. But I wanted to know where they went so I could start to fill in all of the ground area. And I've mixed up kind of a brownish green color to be my first layer of grass. So I'm just gonna kind of tap it in and scribble it a little bit just to start to fill it in. And I'm going to do it on the shadows first and then I'm going to start mixing up my lighter color and start to bring that in where all the sun is. I'm using kind of a medium toned green to start to bring in some of these highlights where the sun is and I'm painting all of this inner ring that I had drawn with this green and then I'm just kind of dappling it back into these shadows here and just doing it a little bit stronger on these edges and then fading it back as I go this way.
I'm putting some highlights on these tree trunks. Now because I am going to be filling in leaves up top, you're not really going to see a whole lot of detail there, but just in case you do see some, I did kind of like finish all of these. As for the trunks themselves, I'm kind of imagining reflected light kind of hitting this platform and then bouncing up and casting this reflected light on the trees. Um, so that's why it's kind of like this front here and then this part here is kind of like bouncing that way. So I'm just going to continue to add a few little highlights. Um, it's getting pretty light already because it is kind of sitting here in shadow, but I do want to add just a little bit of these bright, bright highlights on them. Next I'm going to take a little bit of like dark green colors and start to block in some leaves um, and I'm going to put those on all of the trees. As I work towards the highlights by adding more yellow and more white, um, it's only going to be on certain areas, kind of like the fronts of these leaves where they kind of go into the sunlight here. I was working on doing the leaves and I had them kind of larger and showing a lot more of the open space and I didn't really like it so I switched to a bigger brush and started to do um, kind of a texture like I had down here and I like the way it turned out. Um, I got a lot more of the shapes I wanted of where the highlights are going to be but now I feel like everything else is too dark so I'm going to lighten up these tree trunks and then lighten up the highlights on the grass. The platform itself has a few different things to kind of worry about. It has this raised wall around all of the rest of it um, that's going to be a little bit tricky to kind of figure out the math and the geometry of it, but the stairs are probably the hardest part. And because they kind of sit forward from everything else, I'm going to save them for a bit later and work on these walls first. In order to get all of these lines right, I'm going one at a time, each part of the wall, just doing it portion by portion, the side and then maybe the tops, and then like the next part, the sides and the tops, and then the insides, just piece by piece trying to make sure that I'm happy with the final result of how it looks. For example, on this piece right here, um, I wanted it a little darker at the top because my light's kind of coming in at an angle. And then there's going to be a post here for the railing, which is going to cast a little bit of a shadow. So I've made it a little darker on this corner compared to this outside corner. But I didn't want to make it too dark towards the bottom because we'll get some reflected light, but also it overhangs this vertical piece here. So that part will be a lot darker in shadow. But over here on this side, because it's more on the side where the light's going to hit it, it's going to be a bit lighter than over here, but not as bright as this flat portion where it's catching all of the light.
I'm kind of doing two steps at the same time right now. I've taped off this wall um, so I can do a cast shadow of this wall onto the base part because of that angled light I have coming in. And then I'm also doing bricks on these two vertical parts. I've marked in the main grout lines in black and then I'm gonna take a lighter green just to do a little bit of a highlight so you can see that they stick out from that grout line. The next bit of detail is this edge um, that sits here on the inside flat part of this platform. It's kind of this little bit of a carpet or something that's just around these edges and it's kind of a blue color. So I mixed up a blue green color because this is so green um, but it was really saturated so I added some gray to it to tone it down. Um, so I'm going to fill in just kind of this base color first and it kind of has these parts where it juts in and makes these little triangle shapes. So it kind of looks old, like it's been there a long time. So I'm going to work on adding this base color in first, add some white to do a little bit of highlights, and then add some black to do a little bit of shadows over here. I've been working on this little platform here for the sword. The first thing I figured out was how much space I wanted to be in front of it before the stairs. Then I measured up um, the same amount on both sides here just to make a nice level line that I could draw. And I also found my center point so that I could line this up and make sure I had the same space on both sides. That made it perfectly centered on here. It also made it perfectly centered with everything else because that was done the same way. Um, and then I figured out how tall I wanted it so I could complete this first front facing box. And then I had to do these cut off corner pieces that go back at an angle and they're not going to any perspective marks. They're just going to copy whatever these do here. So I took my ruler and lined it up here and I started drawing in some white lines. Um, using all of these different pieces going back just to get kind of a good idea of where this is going the same distance from all of these same lines here. So I lined it up like with the bottom part down here and then I would draw a line on the top with the bricks here and then a line on top. That gave me a good mark where I could line up the bottom of the ruler with one of those white marks and draw in with the dark chalk pastel on the top for that line. And I did the same thing over here to draw in this um, and then to draw in this top line going from that top corner of the front face. Then all I had to do was figure out how far I wanted it to go back on the left and the right, measure to make it the same, and then draw those two outside vertical lines. That was the hard part, was getting that whole front face correct. Then these side pieces go back to the vanishing point, this little one here and then this one. And then I just had to figure out how far back I wanted this to go and how much space I wanted there to be behind it. Then I could just um, level this out doing the same thing that I did down here with this line so I had this nice straight back line. Then I just measured in from each of the sides to draw in where the words are gonna go. And that's all I did for that platform, just to kind of block it in. Now I'm going to paint that in so I don't accidentally erase some of this chalk while I'm working on doing the sword or anything else. And I'm gonna continue the same kind of idea that I was doing here. This side will be a bit lighter, the top is going to be the lightest, and then this side's going to be just as dark as this side is over here.
To draw these diamonds in perspective, I started by lightly sketching in where I wanted them to go to give myself an idea of size, spacing, kind of the negative space around them, and then I drew in two equal lines to the vanishing point, and those are those center lines here that cross the top and the bottom of the diamonds on each side. Then I um, measured out equal lines from there so I could draw an inner line to the vanishing point and an outer line to the vanishing point, and that's where the left and the right side of each diamond are going to hit. And I used um, an X to kind of draw corner to corner to give myself a good box to show how this line goes for horizontal, the top and the bottom. And then I could draw in a line here straight through the middle, um, just kind of eyeballing it from each of these lines. And you can measure from the top to the bottom and divide by two. Um, and that gave me this X and this plus. And the plus goes to the vanishing point, but the X is square to this tiny little one point box I drew. Then I could just kind of connect the dots connecting these top lines that bisect here to the right lines that bisect here, and just going all the way around until I have a diamond shape. Now, they do have a negative space where it's the same color, where like the outside of the diamond is dark, and then there's an inner diamond that's this lighter space again. But I'm gonna fill the entire thing in dark first, and then once it's dry, I'm gonna do the same thing, repeating it to make a smaller diamond, and then just refill that in this color. I did the stairs by taking my lighter color for all the tops and then just one of my darker colors like I used here for all of the um, rise part of the stairs. I used a little bit of a shadow to kind of bring in some of the shadow for the um, railing here and then for the railing I just did it a bit lighter towards like where the sun is coming from and then just darker on the opposite side. But here it gets hit by the sun on the left and it's darker on the right where you can't really see it. So I just kind of painted some of my darker greens in accordingly just to add some shadow and to take away shadow where I needed to. I also did a little bit of a shadow around here and then just a little bit on the top where the sword is going to cast a shadow. Now the sword still needs a lot of detail yet, um, a lot of the colors and lines in it, but I want to bring in some of these big light cones for the sun coming through these trees. Now I've drawn them in with a ruler and I kind of aimed like one at this bright spot here, one at the sword itself, one kind of over here, and then one more towards this spot here, just to kind of make those look like they're illuminated. So I'm taking some soft bodied, um, zinc white, which is a transparent white, on a really big flat brush. And I'm just going to paint over those, starting small at the top and kind of getting a little bit bigger as they come down. And then once I'm happy with the zinc white being transparent, I'm going to take maybe just a little bit of titanium white for the very center part.
Most of the sword is gray, so a lot of this is just going to be getting lighter and darker grays to add some value and to add the details in. There's a couple places where some other colors come in, but they're like super tiny, like just the hilt here. And we're done! We have the Pedestal of Time from The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.